SpaceX marked a new era of space exploration with the launch of two astronauts to the International Space Station. While exciting, they're not actually going anywhere new. When it comes to space, your choice of destinations is limited to low Earth orbit or to the ISS. That is all about to change with the rise of private enterprise and entrepreneurial spirit taking on the final frontier. Everything from space hotels, private deep space journeys, and even moon landings are on the cards. So strap in and plan your space vacation. Click on that subscribe button for more found and explained stories and that notified bell icon so you don't miss anything. Thanks. For nearly 20 years, if you've had enough money, you could have bought a week ticket to the International Space Station. While it's technically a tourism experience, it is well outside the reach of the common person, and you are heading to an active research laboratory. Thus, a few new companies have begun to put plans in motion to build destinations in space beyond a simple rocket ride. And thanks to the rise in private launch companies like SpaceX, space is about to get very full. The first space tourism specifications began back in 2011 with a Russian firm Orbital Technologies. They envisioned a space lodge with room for seven persons on board that would have been opened by 2016. It would have replicated the experience of what it's like to go to the ISS without getting in the way of governments or existing astronauts. Alas, that's all we heard of this project. Making headlines recently was a firm called Orion Span, a US startup that has plans for a space hotel dubbed the Aurora Space Station. This station has enough room for six passengers, staying up for 12 days for 9.6 million US each. The station will provide enough room like being on board a private jet, where visitors are expected to do three months of training before the launch and help out with scientific tasks on board. Thanks to the low Earth orbit, the passengers will see 16 sunrises and sunsets per day and will have to use isolation pods to get any sleep at all. The company has also said that high-speed internet is a necessity for the project, so you can expect to see some TikToks and Instagram stories from Orbit. Our architecture is such a way that it can easily add capacity, enabling us to grow with market demand like a city growing skyward on Earth," said Frank Berger, the CEO of Orion Span. Future plans for the station potentially have private space condos section of the station available to be lived in, visited or subleased by owners. The company has already sold out the first four months of its stays on orbit, with each astronaut paying 80,000 US for a reservation. I'd like to invite you to join me on this exciting journey, and together we'll make history. Another heavyweight contender on the radar is Bungalow Airspace. They have developed a concept of expanding modules that inflate in space and thus take up little room on a rocket, but then have much bigger volume once they get into orbit. A single Bungalow 330 pod has 330 cubic meters of volume, which in realistic terms is the same as a small three-story tower. The company intends to build a single B-330 prototype and attach it to the ISS before allowing four tourists to check in for two months at a time for 52 million US each. Equipped with two galleys, two toilets, enormous cargo space and two disassembled propulsion systems, this is the ideal habitat for a long duration space mission. But what about a completely private station? With the SpaceX rockets now offering plentiful and cheap launches, Bungalow is set to build its first space station by the end of 2021. Moving from there, Bungalow has future plans to build several other orbital modules. Some of them are an advanced medical facility made up of nine modules, 
a biological containment and research station in low Earth orbit, a deep space complex made of four modules that would be in high orbit over the Earth, a complex called the Lunar Depot Ares, which was comprised of several modules that would actually land onto the moon's surface once complete. It would allow 12 astronauts to station there, but has the capacity for 18. This base would have additional structures like solar panels surrounding it. Following that, there is also the Mars Exploration Ship. It is a spaceship made of four B-330 modules that would go orbit Mars and come back. Their ideas cap off with a deep space resupply depot, a vast complex in orbit for spacecraft heading out deeper into space. This would be made of six modules and have three of the additional bigger modules to store fuel and other components. Why stop there? More ambitious is the Gateway Foundation, which announced plans to open something called the Von Braun Space Station, a wheel-shaped rotating space hotel to tourists by 2025. The ring of the station would be made up of 24 inflatable modules, like with Bungalow, with a cylindrical docking axis for spacecraft in the middle. The rotation of the station would have a gravitational force of one sixth of Earth, so whilst not very strong, it would have enough to have showers and sit down meals. Although the station would still have zero G sections where games could be played. There is a potential for playing fictional games such as Quidditch from the Harry Potter series, and for the battle games from Ender's Game. There will also be many of the things you see on cruise ships. Restaurants, bars, musical concerts, movie screenings, and educational seminars. The foundation has claimed the station could see up to 100 tourists per week, and will be able to hold 450 passengers at once. But what about space journeys beyond just a hotel in Earth orbit? Where is the real fantastical ambitious ideas? Students at MIT have come up with an idea called the Managed Reconfigurable In-Space Nodal Assembly, called MARINA for short. This structure would be split between a hotel and a space station to be launched in 2025. It would be slowly built up from modules until 2038, where it could be hired by NASA for a 10-year mission to Mars it would actually be cheaper than any government investing themselves. In 2017, Elon Musk also revealed that he had taken a deposit for two flights around the moon for $70 million each. These tourists were found to be a group of artists as part of the hashtag Dear Moon project who were traveling with their patron to be inspired to create a whole new type of art. Highlights of their trip to the moon will include an Earth rise and seeing the dark side of the moon, the planet, not the unnecessary Transformer sequel. One final crazy idea that may have been put on the back burner comes from the year of 2015. The Golden Spike Company, named after the first railway spike laid on the US Railroad, planned tourism moon landings. Each landing would cost around 750 million US and would have had customers from 15 to 20 different Earth nations. When NASA heard of this idea, they said, Golden Spike's plans rank among the most audaciously private funded space exploration missions ever proposed. And in rebuttal, the Golden Spike company said, if NASA wants a ride, we'd be glad to put them on our railroad. Alas, despite facing a price of around $8 billion for the whole venture to take off, and robotic launches set for 2020, nothing has yet come to pass. The firm turned to Indigo crowdsourcing to begin its initial funding, but only raised $19,000 of its $240,000 goal. All of these ideas are just the beginning. From this century, we can expect to see more options when it comes to destinations, launch sites, and spacecraft. The eventual result will be space installations so big that the entire population can permanently habit and head off to the stars. Once a non-government destination exists in space, 
We believe that it will create a virtuous cycle between three commercial ecosystems of launch, spacecraft and destination. From here, the options truly are limitless. And I for one can't wait to buy my ticket. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below if you would like to be a space tourist. And if this is your second or more video of Found and Explained and you haven't yet subscribed, click that subscribe button. As YouTubers say, it's free and you can cancel anytime.